Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. And another heavyweight news and notes mashup video today, starting with the main fight in this week's heavyweight action, Anthony Joshua, Daniel Dubois, they'll be fighting for the IBF title. And it's fight week, so they've come face to face uh, for the first time in fight week at the Tower Bridge in London. As we know, they're fighting at Wembley Stadium. It looks like it's going to be an absolutely capacity crowd, maybe somewhere around 100,000 people. So I'll go to the quotes and then uh, a couple of different thoughts. So you've got Anthony Joshua saying, it's another day for me. We're going to do some media stuff. Spirits are good, actually. I've prepared for this, so it's not taking time out of my schedule. It fits in well. It's another day, another lion in the jungle. It's another lion ready to hunt. It's just another day for me. Preparation is everything. If you prepare, you're relaxed because you've taken yourself there physically, you've taken yourself there mentally, and you truly believe in yourself. I'm good. And when he was asked what it would mean to become a three-time heavyweight champion, he said, I'm not looking that far ahead because that's just the icing on the cake. I've said to myself precisely, performance is the most important thing for me. Mentally is the most important thing for me. All of the other stuff will follow that. Three time, I've done it once, I've done it twice. Nothing has really changed and I've had to work extremely hard to improve my performance. So I'm fully focused on my performances. That's what will bring me all the glitzy and glam and glory. And he's right, you know, you have to put in the work, one in the gym, but then also be mentally prepared for the actual fight. You can't look past your opponent because if you do, sometimes, you know, that can bite you in the bum. I mean, recently we saw with Andy Ruiz Jr., he looked past Jarrell Miller, said he wanted to face Joseph Parker after the Miller fight and ultimately escaped with a draw. Both those guys didn't look great in that fight. And sometimes dedication and preparation, you know, it's the absolute key especially in the heavyweight division you don't prepare well and you get caught lacking then you can be down you know snakes and ladders style you can be on the way down and as we know joshua and dubois have sparred before in the team gb setup know each other well sparred in the in sheffield uh, joshua says 50 percent better than what i've seen and well prepared physically and mentally i think the fans will be in for an entertaining fight there's only one way i know exactly what i'm going to do i'm not leaving it up to any way i know exactly what i'm going to do and i know exactly what i've got to do and i'll do it and joshua has also paid tribute to his promoter eddie hearn who is also the chairman of matchroom sport who's been with joshua since the first days of his pro career uh, joshua says it's been massive it's been massive for my development in and out of the ring in the ring it's been sensational even though the times that haven't been so good but what a story it is the man knows boxing as well to speak to him outside of the actual competing in business talking about boxing in general it's helped me develop i met eddie when i was probably what 20 21 and now 34 going on 35 next month so it's been a long journey and a fruitful one for us as well in terms of daniel dubois so this was a matchroom press release so he's not quoted here uh, but what we do know from posts on social media, he has been in the Don Charles uh, gym uh, sparring with Tony Yoka in his preparations. I'm sure he's not sparring right now in fight week, but uh, this is obviously a photo taken a little bit earlier. Yoka, I think actually in terms of preparation, not bad. I mean, Yoka has got good skills about the same height as Anthony Joshua, about the same reach, and he boxes and moves, and he would have been able, I think, at least in part, been able to mimic Joshua in the potential style matchup quite well. Maybe not the execution in terms of uh, some of what will be delivered on fight night, but I do think that Yoko is not a bad sparring partner as well, and he's recently uh, just now been signed up to um, Queensbury, signed by Frank Warren, and probably some of the work that's been happening in the gym got him that deal with Warren. Giving Dubois good rounds, I'm sure that would have um, gone a long way to getting him, especially with the potential for a uh, fight with Joe Joyce, which they are now exploring. But that's good sparring. And, and as we know with Don Charles, he's uh, been betting in a relationship with Daniel Dubois for what, more than a year or so now. So I think their pairing is starting to, to bear some fruit, especially from what we've seen uh, in 2024. And he has been building confidence. And also Dubois is looking to be a bit 
bit more physical, a bit more of a bully. Uh, so I think we will see him try to employ some of those sorts of tactics in the fight as well. And Dave Allen, he's weighed in in terms of the punching power. Uh, he's been quoted uh, as saying, from personal experience, Dubois is a much heavier puncher, but Anthony Joshua is sharp. Dubois hits harder, but Joshua much faster, much more fluid and much more in combination. And I guess that sort of sums up the style matchup to some extent. Uh, both these guys can punch, but Joshua, the better boxer, more technical. Dubois, a bit more, I don't want to say rudimentary, but certainly he's got, I think, less arrows in his quiver. But he does have a lot of determination. And when he hits you, a lot of guys stay hit. And, you know, he'll be looking for a knockout in this one. I think Dubois' path to victory is to break down and stop Joshua rather than a decision because i think if it goes to the cards joshua is going to get it in terms of other action this week so you've got richard torres jr the olympic silver medalist from 2021 he's retur returning against joey deveco and that's a good step up fight in terms of um, the career for richard torres currently 10 and 0 i mean he needs it i mean he needs rounds at the moment he needs that seasoning and Deveco, you know shorter heavyweight but he's a bit of a tank he should be able to take Torres some rounds and it has been elevated per this press release to the co-main event of the card that it is on which is the uh, Mangia Bazinian so I mean that that fight Mangia and Bazinian is a good fight in its own right so Torres uh, getting a little bit more exposure via this uh, co-main event that he's going to be in and hopefully some more seasoning and some rounds because in the next couple of fights top rank no doubt will be looking to step him up and if he's a little bit caught short in terms of uh, some of the style matchups and some of the durability he's going to face higher up you know it'll be exposed pretty quickly so he does need rounds right now also this weekend after uh, a couple of weeks where we haven't had a lot of heavyweight action a few other fighters in action 8-0 prospect thomas carter who's been managed by dillian white uh, he will be back in action at the three arena in dublin and it's been a little bit quiet since uh, dillian white with his career in the heavyweight division has slowed down some of the fighters within his stable it's also slowed down for them his cart he has been out in portugal more recently uh, training with white so we'll have to see what white can do for him on that management side but uh, yeah it's, it's getting to the point where he needs to be in the mix in that sort of uk scene with the likes of a tommy welsh or maybe a johnny fisher solomon dakers at the moment the opportunities seem a little bit sparse for the irishman peter kederu and also victor jerk returning on the same card in germany and hamburg this weekend uh, the opponents uh, you know pat uh, for jerk he's still a little bit earlier peter kederu 18 and 1 record at this point his opponent not a lot there on the record but it is an undefeated record so i guess that's something you have to check uh, on listings if you can get that one for free i think you might be able to Fango opilu he's reflected on his loss to hemi ahio he started the fight well he faded uh, in terms of the gas in the tank hemi ahio was able to outwork him get a split decision he says uh, what a show duko events put on on the weekend it was an honor to be a part of even though we didn't get the win but fighting on a big show like that surrounded by family and boxing legends was a night never to forget maybe down the line we could do the third hemi a heel fight uh, and then he goes on to thank some people and actually that's a good fight if they were to have a trilogy both one apiece it's been hard to sort of in terms of the style matchup and how it's played out in both fights it's been evenly matched I, I do think a third fight down the line I wouldn't be adverse to it at all how about you and just to end on a little uh, note uh, so Luis Ortiz uh, spotted in the gym posting to a social media so you may recall that uh, for a long time his uh, advisor sort of ran an Instagram account that was um was a king kong boxing but it wasn't actually controlled by ortiz he's got his own account it's only got five thousand followers uh so he's been posting some shots of him as some videos of him working in the gym this is this month currently 45 years old still looking to make some noise in the heavyweight division but i just think the the window has closed now but will anyone give him a shot last seen in a big fight in 2022 against andy ruiz jr he lost that one by decision as we know prior to that fought and beat charles martin but he got dropped a couple of times including what was it by a jab he has been in action at the start of this year in a nothing sort of tune-up fight down in south america but you know interesting times i mean will anyone 
want to get into the ring with Ortiz now because how much credit can you get for beating a 45 year old guy who's been inactive he still and this is I guess the thing with Ortiz in his career he still thinks he's a viable threat in the heavyweight division but I think the older he gets the you know if he's not accepting a role as a journeyman gatekeeper you know saying he's a contender and he's going to do something I think he's limiting his opportunities but yeah, his career, he can do what he wants. But interested in your take on that. I guess, you know, he's still in shape, but at 45 years old, I think the tools, I mean, allegedly 45 years old, could be older. Um, but yeah, the tools will not be uh, as sharp as they once were. Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.